up higher than the level of inflation. And somehow, I love how they all say, but inflation's going to go down. They don't say how, with food, with the fertilizer, with the crop shortages. I mean, with everything that's going on, there is no way on God's green earth, but they have to do it to retain their credibility. Uh, but they're, but they're not going to be able to. Any central bank that has made any attempt to raise interest rates since 2009 or 2008 has failed. It has failed abysmal. I mean, it's just abysmal. So um, where do they go from here? They're trying to keep their jobs, but hopefully people will lose enough confidence so that the guys that got us into this mess are not the same guys that stay in power on the other side of this mess. There is no fixing it because even what they have in mind for us, the CBDCs, um, I have not been able to find what would justify their creation other than more debt. So they have to get rid of all that debt and the way that they typically do it, especially when you're in an advanced economy, there's really not much choice in this, is they have to hyperinflate that debt away so that they pay it back with dollars that have no value. They have to. You know, look at all the headlines. They were shocked by the level of inflation. They were shocked by the PMI. They were shocked by this and shocked by that and shocked by, they're shocked, they're surprised. We, I think as humans, always make the assumption that people think like we do. I don't think these are the most brilliant people. I think they are humans. I think that it's their job to keep us calm, the public calm, and to uh, instill confidence in the system that they know what they're doing. But they, that's the piece that they've gotten wrong. However, we're at the end of the cycle. I mean, there's virtually no purchasing power left inside of the currencies, whether it's the Australian dollar or the US dollar, there's virtually no purchasing power left in any of these currencies. That is by design because they knew that not one man in a million understood inflation. So in that way, they could rob us and get us to agree to the robbery. And I'm talking about, you know, what we get paid for our work. So I'm not convinced that they are the smartest guys at all. I think people need to realize that they are human beings. They have a job to do. Their main job is to keep us calm. So they might spend five minutes on policy and eight hours on how they're going to deliver that to us. It's called perception management. But when you're at the very end with virtually no purchasing power left, so I don't know, how do you go below zero? They've been trying it. That hasn't worked either. And the tool that they've used going back to the most ingenious, really, experiment in controlling the rate and speed of inflation what tool do they have to do that? And that's interest rates. So they want to tighten monetary policy, which is what we're talking about right now. They raise interest rates and presumably that slows down borrowing and spending. They want to stimulate the economy, get people to borrow and spend. They drop interest rates. But every time that they, that they do QE, it takes more and more QE to get less and less results other than asset price inflation, like the real estate. It's not gold going up in value. It's not the car going up in value. It's the dollars losing or the fiat money losing value. So when you see gold goes up, you know, I mean, what do people pay attention to? They want to see things go up in terms of dollars because that's that nominal confusion. So the price in terms of dollars or in terms of whatever the fiat currency is must be held down because if that goes up and when that goes up, more people start to pay attention to it because gold is good money. It's been good money for 6,000 years. It doesn't need a central bank to say it's money. It's got the broadest base of buyer because it's the most functional asset that there is. And it is the only asset 
that runs zero counterparty risk, no default risk. And there is no other financial asset that can say that. So do they want you to be holding physical gold and even physical silver in your possession? Heck no, because then they can't rob you. And that's why. And the inflation tax, where they don't even have to go to legislation and make it visible that they're taxing you. That, that was a big reason why the government took us off the gold standard to begin with. Because if they want to tax you and you're on a gold standard, they're taking your gold and you know about it. And you might go, mm -mm, no, mm -mm. but if it's inflation that does it and they can keep it at that 2% level, they get what they want, but you just don't know. And therefore you volunteer it and yeah. corporations oh, works well for corporations too, because it, when you read, when they set up the system, corporations wanted to pay their employees less. But if you're used to making 20 bucks, you're not going to accept 10. But if they can give you 20 bucks that spends like 10 because of inflation, well, a lot their goods and services are what's inflating. And so the corporations, well, they've been making money hand over fist. I mean, at the highest levels and look at this income inequality. 1971, the CEO average uh, average wage was 20 times what the average worker was. Today, it's something like 380. You know, really what, what the gold standard actually did was require governments to be fiscally responsible. So yeah, I think this whole bubble is going to pop. And I think what, what's going to happen, I'm, I'm, I could be wrong because I can't control this, but I'm a hundred percent certain of this that you've got this overvalued real estate and this undervalued gold, and this is going to flip flop. So what might take you, you know, a hundred ounces of gold to buy this property today might only take you a quarter of an ounce as we're in hyperinflation. And I might also point out that this is used in one place, the financial system as a tool of barter, gold, silver, is used in manufacturing, it's used in medicine, it's used in the financial system, it's used in jewelry, it's used in food, it's used in every single sector. I don't know why nobody ever talks about that. When you're inside of a crisis, what do you want? You want something that only has one buyer and that buyer decides, nah, I don't want it. Okay, you have no buyers, you just have this and it's worth this. But now you have something where you have full demand, sometimes more, sometimes less, depending upon the economy. But there is always a hundred percent of the time demand.